Hello and welcome to Dialogue. Though the announcement of a new Afghan government was expected to come soon, a Taliban spokesperson has said the formation will not happen before Saturday, which is September the 4th. What do we know about the transition process so far? How will the new government tackle the many challenges ahead? And how will the international community react to the new leadership? For some insight, I'm joined today by Zun Ahmed Han, Research Fellow at the Belt and Road Strategy Institute of Tsinghua University, also by Professor Faiz Zaland of Kabul University, and Serkan Oral, political analyst and writer in Istanbul, Turkey, and later on by Professor Wang Jin, Associate Professor of Northwest University of China. That's our topic. I'm Wang Guan. Faiz, let me go to you if I can. The Taliban said initially that they will announce the formation of a new government on September the 3rd, that is a uh, Saturday, uh, the, uh, for the Friday. A Taliban spokesperson has said the formation will not happen before Saturday. Uh, why do you think it's a delay? Uh, thanks for having me. I think uh, there wasn't any official uh, uh, announcement uh, from any Taliban spokesperson or their officials that, uh, uh, that they have a specified date or day. Uh, they are working on uh, the new government formation structure and also uh, uh, the cabinet members uh, uh, since uh, very long. Uh, they are uh, trying to uh, be more inclusive. Uh, they are trying to be present in Kabul. Uh, they uh, are uh, working with many uh, regional and international uh, uh, countries and uh, uh, regional powers to communicate based on their demand also for the recognition and legitimacy. Uh, in internal uh, domestic politics, they are working also with many stakeholders like uh, former political uh, parties and uh, uh, governmental officials uh, to have their consent also on uh, uh, the making and formation of the new cabinet. Soon within the uh, coming week, uh, mid, uh, there, will be, uh, uh, there will be a ceremony of uh, holding an oath for the new cabinet and new government in Kabul. Yeah, we've heard this one too many times in the past days and weeks uh, that the Taliban said they want to make the new government inclusive, as inclusive as possible. Uh, in what ways do you think it could be different from the old Taliban leadership of the 90s? Yes, uh, uh, there will be uh, certain uh, differences. Uh, inclusivity is a uh, very uh, uh, liquid or fluid uh, word. It can be translated in terms uh, from different parties uh, with different uh, uh, interpretation. Uh, for uh, Taliban, inclusivity comes uh, ethnical. Uh, there will be all ethnical uh, representatives. It comes with religious. It will be considering uh, the minorities to be represented. It also, uh, uh, inclusivity also encompasses the regional and provincial uh, basis. It will be uh, uh, representative of all the re regional and uh, uh, subnational uh, uh, governance or provincial uh, bodies of Afghanistan. I think you're frozen, my friend. Uh, Sir Khan, let me go to uh, you much, in Istanbul, uh, Turkey. Uh, yeah, sorry, um, Faiz. Um, let me go to my friend in Turkey. Sarkhan, what do you think? What do you expect the new government to look like? A uh, new government will be uh, different than the uh, last uh, 20 years. Uh, especially, I was in uh, Afghanistan uh, as a TV journalist. Uh, I was uh, passing from Peshawar to Kabul at that time. Uh, at that time, it was, they were against the Soviet Union then later on against CIA. And then now uh, there is a Bukelemon uh, revolution that we can uh, name uh, on this. They are ready to form uh, their ideas and to shape the new uh, Afghanistan. Uh, so first one is the war is over. And the second one, uh, Afghan um, new government should repair uh, inside the uh, construction, uh, the buildings, the life inside and also the, uh, to make the uh, international relations with neighbors and the Western world to show that they have capacity to be a part of the international uh, world. So uh, it seems uh, we will see the change 
but uh, the thing is that uh, all the withdrawals of United States uh, from Syria or Iraq, we saw uh, broken uh, borders and uh, f uh, also civil wars uh, going on years and years uh, that will be test for the new uh, Afghan government uh, to be peaceful uh, life and situation in Afghanistan or mm -hmm. more chaotic uh, and uh, a civil uh, um, situation uh, in uh, uh, their country. We will see the footsteps. We will watch the footsteps. There is speculation that the Turkish president, uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, will likely be among the first uh, leaders to recognize the new Taliban government, if any, in the coming days and weeks. Uh, what do we know about that? And what are the, the traditional uh, friendship between the Afghans and the Turks? Uh, the Turks, uh, they see uh, Afghans uh, as brothers. Uh, even Turkey is a part of Western world, the NATO allies. Uh, the thing is that uh, the uh, history is uh, coming later on, a big return after 100 years. Uh, the Turkey uh, was the first uh, uh, di uh, diplomatic repre representation. The Turkish ambassador was in Kabul uh, in 1919 uh, after the inauguration of uh, Afghanistan. So Turkey still um, helped um, to the Afghan governments uh, between 1920 and 1960. Now there is a good chance, a critical role for Turks to play uh, in Afghanistan, uh, the uh, Hamid Karzai airport is an important uh, uh, point uh, to recover and to start the international flights for uh, 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 Afghanistan. The second one, uh, uh, Afghanistan is the heart of the Central Asia. So uh, if you pay attention to the uh, Beijing, Istanbul, London, uh, Belt and uh, Road project, so Afghanistan should be stable. Yeah. Turkey promotes the stable issues there. And uh, uh, if uh, uh, the problems between the uh, Western uh, world, uh, Turkey will mediate. And the Turkish mm -hmm. uh, President Erdogan is, uh, uh, ho uh, will be maybe the first uh, or the second countries that will welcome a new government. Darkan, you talked about Pakistan, a very important uh, regional stakeholder. Azun, let me go to you. Pakistan mm -hmm. shares a long border with Afghanistan. You know this better than I do. Over 2,000 uh, kilometers. Uh, Pakistan suffered a whole lot since the so-called war on terror began. Uh, what are the stakes for Pakistan, and uh, what does Pakistan want a new Taliban government to look like? So thank you, firstly, Frank, for having me on the program. Um, I think I, I will actually continue what your previous speaker from Turkey was saying, that Afghanistan is really the heart of Central Asia. And as he talked about the Belt and Road project that connects China through Afghanistan, even the success of the China-Pakistan economic corridor, our vision really for Pakistan as Afghanistan being the country we not only have a very porous border with, we have a symbiotic relationship. I think this is the most accurate way to describe Pakistan and Afghanistan's relationship. So if we want our, this opportunity, this precious opportunity of CPEC to really materialize fully, to give full benefit, then we are envisioning through CPEC we connect Afghanistan and towards Central Asia Pakistan can act as a deep sea port, can be an access point for Central Asian, landlocked Central Asian countries through Afghanistan. And for Pakistan as well, these trade routes can be feasible, can, can result in a lot of uh, prosperity and economic growth that we are planning for our country. So for the stakes of Pakistan, for these 20 years of war, we have suffered immensely. Uh, Afghans live side by side with Pakistanis. Many Afghan refugees are well settled in Pakistan. Many Afghans have settled for generations now. So for Pakistan, really, what is at stake is stability. Pakistan's and I think other neighbors of Afghanistan, we think of Afghanistan and the region as, uh, as uh, uh, connected. We benefit from economic mm -hmm. connectivity, but also we suffer a lot when one of our neighbors is perishing. And that is what Afghanistan has been going through, and that is what has affected all of us. So, so quite uh, frankly, for Pakistan for these past 20 years, and especially now, we really want the international community to come together and support Afghanistan, because we need solutions. We can't just airlift people and get out of the region. Yeah. We are the region. So this is something important to understand.
Zun, uh, let's talk about the issue of women's rights in mm. uh, Afghanistan. There are reports, um, you know, multiple media reports saying that uh, there have been dozens of Afghan women uh, protesting on the street of Kabul against the Taliban. Um, what do you make of that? It's compli okay, so first of all, let me say that you asked the previous guests about what kind of government the Taliban want to form. And I think one of the differences between the previous and current is that they are very cautious about their image. They understand the baggage of that period and they understand that they need to address questions, especially those of women's rights and women empowerment. So this is one aspect where we see the Taliban communicating effectively and quite uh, convincingly so far that they will support women's rights within a certain uh, mindset. They do have, they do want to follow Sharia, which many countries do, uh, many Muslim countries do. So that's one thing, the communication is so far positive. Uh, that said, I think these uh, privileged uh, communities within Afghanistan for the past 20 years, we see immense progress and I think that's something truly commendable. I'm so proud of some Afghan people, I know personally women who have achieved a lot that wouldn't have been possible without the situation that they were in. But at the same time, we need to understand that a majority of Afghan girls could not even go to school, didn't have access, were not safe because there was a war going on in the country. So I think, first of all, we need to understand that the coverage of international media, of the Taliban, it mostly starts with, well, they say this, how do we trust them? Well, how do we trust anyone? What is the solution? What is the alternative? So first of all, the way we talk about the Taliban, the way we cover these issues needs to be more responsible. People are afraid because that's what they're reading all over the news. And secondly, I think the women organizations as well, sure, express your concerns, talk about it, but understand that this is your country. Those on the other side are also Afghan, so are you. And we, the region, support, I think all countries in the region, the SEO region, we talk about the Belt and Road, of course, we don't want to dictate anything to Afghanistan. That's no one's business. But at the same time, we want progress. And the Taliban understand that they need the support of the mm -hmm. region, the global community. So they, too, must act and probably yep. will act more responsibly. So I think, just lastly, to conclude, I want to say that this is a false notion that women have made some tremendous progress in Afghanistan over 20 years. A majority of women were suffering and were not even able to get a basic education. Yeah, um, hopefully that will improve soon. Faiz, let me go to you. For a new regime, a new government, international recognition is key. Uh, there has been quite a lot of politicking um, globally about the recognition or the lack of it for the new Taliban government when it comes. Uh, for example, the Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has already said that Canada will not recognize the new government. The US is waiting. Um, so are some other major stakeholders. What kind of geopoliticking do you expect to see when it comes to the recognition of the new Taliban government? I think uh, regarding the legitimacy and recognition, uh, Taliban are more concerned uh, first uh, for the domestic uh, uh, acceptance. Uh, they are much more focused on uh, uh, to have uh, an, a reintegration and assimilation, naturalization, uh, after 20 years of uh, being them kicked out of the country by uh, the U.S. and international forces. Secondly, they are more focused on the regional powers. Uh, they are closely working with uh, uh, direct neighbors, and then uh, with China, Russia, even uh, they have started uh, a backdoor uh, communication with uh, uh, India to uh, uh, answer and uh, encompass the concerns they have regarding Afghanistan's uh, future. And lastly, uh, they have been uh, working hard with uh, uh, U.S. and NATO uh, for past three years in direct communication over the peace process and specifically after the um, uh, post-peace agreement conditions that how to fight the global terrorism, how to uh, cooperate on the regional uh, uh, matters uh, that were most important for uh, U.S. and uh, their allies. So uh, in regard of the recognition, I think those all uh, uh, factors will uh, uh, behave and they will assist Taliban to have uh, a fully recognized government in coming days by not only U.S. and in, uh, international community, by neighbors and other powers also. Um, Sir Khan, let's talk about the economic hardship uh, Afghanistan is facing. Nearly $10 billion in Afghan central bank's assets are being frozen by the U.S. 
and the report saying that there has been a you know grain shortage. Uh, Afghan grain reserves may run out by the end of September. Um, how do you look at this economic difficulty when it comes to the new regime, if any, of the Taliban group? Uh, new government uh, should uh, uh, go with the uh, uh, Western countries also and neighbor countries together. It's not easy for them uh, for the economical development and the goods of the country. Uh, Afghanistan uh, has important uh, mines and goods uh, that uh, should uh, be an economical boom for the region. Uh, so uh, it seems uh, they need a new um, understanding and uh, doing business with China, uh, Turkey, even Pakistan or Moscow. When you see the uh, Russia, Russia, uh, they don't let their uh, diplomats uh, come back. So th they are uh, near to recognize the new government. And for, uh, for Turkey, uh, during the uh, last uh, t uh, 15 years, even uh, Turkish um, uh, uh, military forces uh, uh, educated and uh, shaped uh, the schools, uh, Afghan militaries, etc. I mean, the Turkey paid uh, uh, more, more than one billion dollars for AIDS. This was the biggest one from Turkey to another country. So, uh, for the economical developments, uh, Afghanistan and also for United States, if uh, there will be stability in the region. You know, uh, there are lots of questions about the drug issues, the drug trade. Uh, Afghanistan is the base that the drugs are coming from uh, Asia, from three ways to Europe, uh, for Europe. Uh, the European countries just thinking about the refugee programs, problems. Uh, they are expecting uh, less migrants and they don't pay attention to the uh, growth uh, of uh, uh, Afghanistan and the uh, better lives and uh, a better situation for uh, Afghans. They don't think about that. J they just see the dollars, euros, something like that. So uh, the new government uh, should take some advices with the, the neighbors and the international community to, to be the part of this world. Um, Zun, you know, what kind of uh, scrambling behind closed doors you, do you think the Taliban government, you know, the Taliban group is currently having uh, in Long order to get international aid? Because after all, international aid is important to yeah. the economy of Afghanistan. Yes. So firstly, I will quickly just continue the point from uh, your previous guest. I think one of the important things that we need to recognize is that this, uh, first of all, these countries like, like Justin Trudeau says, oh, we will help thousands of Afghans come to Canada and settle there. This is not helping Afghanistan. This is a recipe for disaster. This brain drain can really cripple the country. And if we foresee any stable progress, any stable uh, economic um, uh, any uh, improvement, which I'm just appalled didn't happen in these 20 years, then these people should actually be encouraged to stay and their fears should not be stoked. So that's one important thing. And uh, as for your question, I think it's, uh, they realize, for example, uh, the Taliban spokesperson said that China is, some, we, we are looking forward to cooperation from China. We have expectations from China. They understand that in the short term, first of all, they really need aid. They really need recognition. And not recognizing the government will only result in uh, chaos, in, in actually pushing them yeah. into, towards uh, drug trade, towards um, isolation. And uh, in fact, the region cannot afford that. So I think for the Taliban, they understand that countries in the region, their neighboring countries, are going to be critical. These countries can convince others to, to actually recognize the government so that we can proactively help and support them so that this country moves in the right direction. So they understand this. And another point, you see, now the Taliban for 20 years have come with the mandate that they will end foreign occupation rather than a pan-Islamist mandate, a pan-Islamist ideas that they had in the 1980s and 1990s. So currently their focus is on state building. They understand that the country they inherit, this is not a success, this is not a victory, it's a lot of work that's going to go into this. So for that they need support, they need people to stop leaving the country, they need a basic aid and they need support in terms of be, being able to stabilize just enough that infrastructure projects can be at least envisioned and eventually implemented. The economy is really uh, key there. Um, Professor Wang Jin, let me turn to you. 
we've heard from uh, the state councillor and foreign minister Wang Yi, and we've heard from Chinese foreign ministry spokesperson making statements about Afghanistan and the Taliban. What do you make of China's position toward the Taliban so far? Uh, I think that China's position uh, towards Af uh, Afghanistan after the Afghan Taliban uh, took the, the dominant power inside the country is very clear uh, that uh, uh, on the one hand, actually China respects the, the, the Afghan people's choice and uh, we hope to develop uh, the ties with Afghanistan uh, under the principle, the very important principle that always claimed by China is that Afghan-owned, Afghan-led that means China will actually uh, respect the the, uh, the national independence of Af Afghanistan, will respect the sovereignty as well as uh, the the independent status of the country. So we hope to uh, develop the, the very uh, the, the, the 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 relations with Afghanistan in the future. But meanwhile, uh, China is very also stressed our uh, concerns. Mean, uh, means that China does not want the Afghanistan to go back to the status uh, before 2001. Uh, that uh, uh, Afghanistan becomes the very center or become the base or important home for many of the extremists as well as the terrorist networks inside the country because these networks of the terrorism will threat everybody, will threaten not only China but also other regional countries and will become also the very, very important factor to, to destabilize Afghanistan in, uh, at home. So uh, China's concerns is very clear. China's principle is very clear, yeah. and China's uh, very stance is very clear. So I think in the future, China will still stand uh, hand by hand with other regional countries and also other uh, Afghan uh, issue-related powers to uh, to uh, help Afghanistan as well as to watch the latest developments in the future. Wang Wen. But Professor Wang Jin, isn't that a delicate balance? Because we still remember back in the day when East Turkestan Islamic Movement, uh, you know, many of their fighters joined the Taliban and Al Qaeda, and uh, you know, many reports suggest that the current Taliban may be uh, supported by some extremist forces and groups, um, you know, tribal um, groups. Um, how can China make sure that this Taliban is? pretty different from the Taliban in the 90s, especially when it comes to, um, you know, counter-extremism? Uh, I think uh, I think China cannot uh, make sure because it, it is, the, it, it is the, 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 the Afghan Taliban who determine who are they. But I think, uh, I think that China will help to encourage Afghan Taliban to uh, cut the ties with this kind of the terrorist networks as well as the terrorist organizations coming to Afghanistan from the other regions and also other parts of the world. Uh, what we are, uh, what we, uh, we, we are looking here at here are the Chinese uh, very efforts that has already been made that on the one hand express a very clear messages to Afghan Taliban representatives in different, on the different occasions. And meanwhile, China also exchanged the ideas and the possessions with other Afghanistan issue related countries to hope in the hope that all the countries can make and reach a kind of consensus and uh, turn it into the kind of pressure and uh, to help Afghani, uh, Afghan Taliban to change their behavior, not as before. And also we have already uh, look, if we look at or um, uh, observe the, what Afghan Taliban did I mean, that during the past months, I think there has some kind of a differences. For example, Afghan Taliban tried to uh, contact the outside world uh, very actively, not uh, similar to what happened before 2001. And also, Afghan Taliban uh, uh, promised to establish a kind of the so-called inclusive government, and also try to consort with different uh, major political and uh, military blocs inside Afghanistan to hope to uh, bring the stability back to the country. So these are the very positive signs, and I think th this has already been noticed by China, and also we encourage this development trend. So I think in the future, I myself is very uh, confident that maybe Afghanistan Taliban will become different uh, to what it was before. I mean, what it, it did, I mean, before mm -hmm. 2001, when the Afghan Taliban at that time, they supported the uh, terrorist networks. Maybe mm -hmm. in the future, I think Afghan Taliban will change the behaviors and will have the chance and opportunity to develop a very positive sides with different neighboring countries, with different regional countries. I, I'm sure about it, Guang Guang. And the same question goes to you, um, Sir Khan, and then Zun. Do you share the confidence expressed by Professor Wang Jing, and do you think the Taliban 
this time around will draw a clear line with the extremist forces that may have you know, helped the group consolidate power. Sure, uh, they defeat uh, the foreign powers and it's a victory for themselves. But Taliban government now uh, for the Afghan brothers, for their wealth, health, stability, ne they need to uh, be part of uh, the international powers. So they should invite uh, foreign powers uh, to reconstruct Afghanistan again. But so important, uh, the Central Asia um, neighbors, uh, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, and uh, also Turkmenistan, there are concerns about the rise of the res radicalization. Uh, so uh, this is important for Taliban to choose the right way, the right way for the women rights, human rights, and all the terror groups that uh, they fight for against the foreign powers, now it's over. To rebuild the new Afghanistan, they should pay attention to the right path that is the uh, order, stability, and without terrorism. I, I yeah. believe that the conditions uh, should uh, uh, push uh, the new government on this way. Zun, what do you think? Yes. So I think, um, first of all, the ability of the Taliban to maintain stability and to ensure depends on their intention and their capability. And I think just like Professor Wang Jing said, their intention so far, obviously we cannot 100% trust what they say, but so far they seem to be doing things right and we just have to take it as it comes. But their capability to be able to ensure that Afghanistan is not used against the region, against the world by terrorist outfits, depends on how the world supports them, how the region supports them, how we are able to ensure that there isn't lasting chaos in the country. And I think that is where the international community has to be very responsible. The Taliban are not occupying forces. They're not going to pack up and just leave one day. They're thinking about the long-term uh, long consequences of their policies and their move right now. And they understand that they depend on the region and, uh, and basically validation, recognition by the world to be able to make of Afghanistan what any, anyone, any government uh, uh, should be aiming for. So their plans are, seem to be long term. They seem to have an economic perspective, as I earlier said. They seem to be thinking like statesmen. How capable they are, we together as the region, as the world, will also facilitate that process. Professor Wang Jing, any final thoughts? Uh, yes, I, we, 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 we always say that there were kind of the historical uh, negative image over the uh, Afghan Taliban, what they did before and what, uh, what this kind of the experience might influence the future, imagine the future behaviors of Afghan Taliban. But as the uh, new latest developments would happen in Afghanistan, as the Afghan Taliban has already become the very dominant power of the country, and I think that uh, all the Afghan re issue related countries and related parties should do everything they can to help Afghan people, uh, to help Afghan Taliban to turn uh, back to stability and go to the uh, to make the right choices, not only for the country but also for the Afghan people themselves. Wang